Now here's a question, who doesn't enjoy a taste of the high life? A bit of posh nosh to make a meal feel, well, decadent or to impress that special someone. Well, I'm sure you've noticed that several of the things that used to be considered luxury food items are now widely available for us all to enjoy. And sometimes at surprisingly reasonable prices. But you know, it's clear from the emails we've received that I'm not the only one to have wondered how on earth they do it. So with some of you asking if we're genuinely getting what we think we are and not a pale imitation, we've been sampling what at least appears to be some of the finer things in life. Lobster, truffles and caviar. Once the preserve of the great and the good, but now sold by most major supermarkets in some shape or form. Whether it's olive oil infused with their flavors or pasta dishes boasting them as ingredients. But can we be sure that everything we now see offered at more affordable prices is the real deal or quite the exclusive taste we expect? One rip-off Britain viewer who enjoys indulging in some of life's finer things is jazz singer Alison Taylor, who lives in Perthshire. She has a penchant for truffles and on a recent trip to Italy was given some as a gift. But she wrote to us curious as to whether what she's got is really the genuine article. Truffles, I have a big love affair with truffles. Truffles, because they're so sort of pungent and strong and nutty and earthy in their flavor, they're just so unique. And also the simplicity of the truffle on pasta, that's a massive um, plus for me, I love truffles. The food Alison loves so much is an edible fungi that grows underground. It has a, a very distinctive earthy taste and firm texture. And although there are many species, some are more prized for their flavor than others. It's safe to say Alison is a fan, but she knows that a jar this size wouldn't come cheap. In fact, single fresh truffles can cost around 30 pounds each. So she wanted to savor them and use them sparingly. The jar of truffles sat in the fridge for a few weeks before we decided to open up the jar. And that was for a special occasion. We said, we really built up to this occasion. We'll have some fabulous pasta and we'll shave the truffle onto the pasta. And it was just such a big disappointment when the jar was finally opened. The punch and aroma Alison had fallen in love with during her time spent tasting truffles in Italy was, she felt, notably absent. I was expecting when I opened the jar to be walloped in the face with the smell of Italy and great food and this truffle sensation, but that just didn't happen. Instead, Alison felt her truffles had a more vinegary odor, which struck a real bum note with a singer, particularly after some rumors she'd heard about some products on the market. Our close friends in Italy warned us that Chinese have been sculpting potato into the shape of truffles and scenting them up and dyeing them. And we suspected that the truffles in our jar may have been potato that had been sculpted, which completely horrifies me. I would like to find out what's in the jar and if it's actually truffles. But the contents of her own jar isn't the only thing that's got Alison in a truffle kerfuffle. There's a lots of truffle oils on the market as well. I'm interested to know whether it's authentic truffle, it's been scented up chemically or if it's been scented with actual truffle proper, the essence of real truffle. Truffle expert Dr. Paul Thomas is ready to unearth the truth behind Alison's truffle conundrum. He has a PhD in plant science and runs a company which cultivates truffles worldwide. Alison is here to meet him and do some digging of her own. I was gifted some truffles, but when I opened up the jar, it didn't taste or smell of anything. What tends to happen with those products in the jars is they take the fresh truffles, they poach them in hot water, they, all the flavor goes into the water, or a lot of the flavor goes into the water, they put that in a can, and they sell that to chefs, and they cook with it, and then they put the truffles into the jar and sell them to you and me. So by the time it's got into the jar, it's lost a lot of those, uh, that wonderful aroma. Dr. Thomas can also explain how it is that many of the truffle products on sale in supermarkets now seem so affordable. What they did in the 80s, they took one of the flavor compounds from truffles, mm -hmm. they synthesized it, produced it artificially, and then they started to produce truffle oil with it. So when you buy truffle oil, even though it says natural flavoring, they can call it natural flavoring, they can call it truffle extracts, they can call it uh, truffle concentrate, 
and it's pretty much always synthetic. So, so it, do you think that's a, a good justification for the for the prices that they? Absolutely not. No, it's um, it's a very cheap product to produce. So we've asked Dr. Thomas to take a look at a couple of supermarket products to see if the taste of luxury they appear to provide is all that it seems. First up, truffle pesto that costs around £2.50 for a 90-gram jar. Rather more than standard pesto. And the ingredients we've got here, we've got flavourings, ubiquitous, so that's probably some truffle flavouring within there. But also this one contains uh, black summer truffle. And you can see there's black specks in there. So do you think that's actually the black truffle? Yeah, so that should have a black truffle species in there. Probably a lot of the flavouring is coming from the synthetic flavour they put in, but that has real truffle in. Next up, some truffle-infused pasta costing three pounds. This says it's got mushrooms in uh, truffle, 0.2%, percent so a very small amount. Tiny. Yeah, but it, and it doesn't even say the species, so it says truffle, so this could be legitimately be Chinese truffle, it could be French truffle, it could be Spanish truffle, it could be English truffle, it could be anything. The likelihood is it'll be the cheapest. As a truffle producer, do you think that there should be a tightening up of how truffles are described on products yeah. such as these? I'd, I'd love to see that. The good thing about these is it makes truffle flavour accessible, so you can get a rough approximation of what they taste like. So they're, they're great to use at home, you know, have a play around with, but just be mindful that real truffles are way more complex and slightly different flavour profile. Speaking of real truffles, Alison's brought with her the one she was given to see whether Dr. Thomas can tell if they are bona fide. I've actually yeah. brought them with me, is okay. that okay? Yeah, yeah it's fine. Well, you thank you very much. I mean, it's listed as summer truffle, it's even got the Latin name. Um, but yeah, we'd have to have a closer look, actually. I'll take them back and we'll try and extract some DNA. So hopefully we can get some good material from that. So we'll, we'll test Great. it. Great, well, I really appreciate that. Thank you for, for doing that for me. Dr. Thomas will take Alison's truffles to his lab to see what he can find out. As for the other products he looked at, we asked the makers what actually goes into their truffle treats. Tesco didn't get back to us about its mushroom and truffle rigasoli pasta. And Sackler, the makers of the truffle pesto, said that because truffles vary in flavor from season to season, it does use some flavoring in addition to real truffle to give it a consistent taste. And it told us the reason its truffle pesto is more expensive than regular pesto is partly because it has a higher cheese and nut content as well. Meanwhile, at his lab, Dr. Thomas has completed his tests on Allison's truffles. Now, Allison is out of the country, so we turn to technology to connect them up and find out if her suspicions are correct. Could what she hoped would be a much-loved treat really be potatoes posing as truffles? Um, oh, gosh. I'm quite anxious to hear what the news is. The, the key things really are, it was a truffle, it wasn't a potato, it was a real truffle. Well, that's good. Well, I'm, I'm, ha I'm heartened to hear that it actually was a truffle. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm just a wee bit concerned that it still tastes of nothing. Can you tell if, if the truffle actually came from Italy? So uh, when we check the spores, we know that it's, uh, it's from Europe, uh, but the sacs were quite empty. So a lot of the spores haven't quite developed, so we know it was immature, so it had very little flavour probably when it went into the preservation process. And also, as you pointed out, you know, the smell really wasn't right, so it, um, something happened throughout the preservation process which rendered it uh, bad. Uh, it had a bad aroma and, and not a truffle aroma, but it was was the right species. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for shining some light on my truffle and where it came from. And I'm really glad that, that it's actually a real truffle and it is from where it said it's from. So after all, it seems that Alison's truffle troubles were down to preservation problems. And according to Dr. Thomas, the contents of her jar being picked too young. And while that's good news for her, Clearly, it isn't always easy to know for sure if the food you've picked really is one of the finer things in life. What appears to be posh and osh may be no such thing. <laughs>